Hello, this is an introduction to Hello, this is an introduction to Tableau, which is a data visualization software. As you may know, it's pretty versatile. Really, anyone who deals with or needs to meaningfully display data, whether that be in graph, graphical form, or some other form, may find Tableau useful. So the first step in using Tableau naturally is setting up Tableau. Uh, as a student, you can get a free one-year license. Um, just follow the link right here and set up your account. It kind of takes some time, which is why I chose not to include the downloading and setting up process in this video, but it's pretty easy to follow along. Okay, so once you've set up Tableau, go ahead and open it. When you open Tableau, you'll see this view. You'll have connect on one panel, open on the other and discover on the third. What's important here is connect. This is how you're gonna upload or import your data set. As you can see, there's a like, variety of ways that you can do that, like Excel, a text file, PDF, or from a server. Yeah, and that's just to reiterate that the first step in using Tableau is importing a data set. Once you've had your data set imported, the next important thing is understanding how this will be represented in Tableau. So tab let's imagine that you have this very simple spreadsheet that's just activity and hours, and those are your two data fields. So once you import data into Tableau, activity and hours will be given to like um, characteristics, a role and a type. So the role will either be a dimension or a measure depending on the nature of the data. So in our case, hours will be a measure since quantitative and activity will be a dimension since qualitative. And then the field will also get a type based on like quite literally the type. So for hours, it'll probably be an integer and activity will probably be a stream. And an important thing to note here is that this is changeable. So Maybe your data field is of one type initially, but once you get into Tableau, you realize that it's more convenient for it to be another type. And this is like, you'll realize this because certain visualizations can only be created with certain types of measures. So like maybe you have to have a measure that's a double or a measure that's an integer or a dimension that's geographical. And that's why it's really important that you can make changes to the type of the data field. So the next thing to do now that you know kind of how Tableau interprets data fields is just go ahead and open it and start working within it. So you can get your data set from a variety of ways, like maybe you yourself collected the data and then cleaned it and like went through that whole process. Um, there's also plenty of data sets online a lot of them are like really interesting. You can basically find anything that you're looking for with a quick search. So that's what we're gonna do today. So we can go to Chrome and I think a relevant topic is probably just like coronavirus. So we can look up like CSV, number of coronavirus cases per country. And you'll see in the results, there are a lot of sites where we can download the relevant data. So we'll go to the first link and we'll see down CSV. Oh, something else to note is you can also find a lot of data sets on GitHub in repositories. If that's something you're interested in doing. Okay, we're going to download the data set and then move it to your desktop or move it to any place that you will that, that's easily accessible. Now that we have our data, we will go to Tableau and since we downloaded a CSV and the CSV is text file, we will click text file and connect to the data and then just go ahead and open it. Okay, now the data has been opened. So be aware that we're under the data source tab and that we see all of our data fields here, right? So like these are the names, ISO code, location, dates, locations, all of that. And then 
based on whether it's blue or green, that's like whether it's a dimension or a type. And then the symbol that's associated with it, oh, sorry, my bad. Okay, if whether it's green or blue is whether it's a dimension or a measure. And then the symbol tells you what type it is. So ABC represents a string, this calendar icon represents a date, and then actually if you right click, it'll tell you um, the type. Yeah, okay, so this is a string. This is a date. Yeah, see, okay. And then remember, these can all be changed, right? So what we are going to do is create a sheet. So I already have sheets, but what you do is click new worksheet under this like symbol right here. And then now we have an empty sheet. So the first thing that we can do is, so we have pages and filters. We're not going to be using that. So you, uh, you can close it or hide it for convenience. And then to create a visualization, click this show me to open up this panel to see which visualizations you can create. And this is what's going to guide our decision. So let's say we want to create this horizontal bar graph. Okay, so we need zero or more dimensions and one or more measures. So for dimensions, maybe we'll pick locations and just drag it up to this columns, like section, and total deaths. And then now we've created our first visualization. And if we want, we can edit the title of it by clicking on this right here. We can call it, uh, we'll just call it this one for now. It's not a great name, but it's fine. Okay, so now we can see total deaths per country. We're scrolling along. And something you might notice is this isn't super meaningful right now, right? So we have all these countries right here, which definitely have deaths, but we can really can't tell that much. Like we can't really tell how many deaths they have because this range is a little bit absurd. Like it goes from zero million to four million. So what we can do is we can right click on this and edit the axis. Axis. Uh, we'll click fixed and instead of four million, let's do. 350,000. And now we close it off. And now it's more meaningful, although some countries are still not particularly meaningful. Um, so you can continue to edit this axis to make it meaningful for your purposes. Okay, next, now that we've created our first visualization, we can go ahead and make another one. So we can either come up here and clear this sheet or we can duplicate this sheet like maybe we want to add more or maybe we want to have one that has a different range on the axis so that we can get like more insights on you know like Guatemala or Jordan which like have very minimal deaths like maybe we can make it just like out of a thousand to see like which countries um are like in that range and then or we can just make a new worksheet. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to make a new worksheet. So we're going to open this again and try to make a different visualization. So this line one seems kind of interesting. Okay, what does it say? It needs one dimension that is of type date and one or more measures. So we, thankfully, we have a dimension of type date and one or more measures. So we can do maybe new cases. And now we have this line graph. And then just like before, we can edit its name by clicking on this sheet for title, change to whatever you'd like. Oh, you can also change the font. Interesting, not wildly important. Um, if you'd like to edit the line, you click on path and change accordingly. Same thing with color, you can make it orange pink, really good choice is yours, and then you can change the size of the line, as well as the label. And so now we have our second visualization. And something else that you can do that's like sometimes useful is like 
when you have the appropriate amount of dimensions and measures selected in your rows and columns, all of the visualizations that you can do will be like, um, I don't know what the word for this is, like highlighted, I suppose. Um, so you can click around and just see. They might not all be meaningful, but it's an interesting thing to do since you've already like dragged in the correct data. Okay, so that's our second visualization. So now let's move on to our third and let's try something, like let's see where it could be useful to change the type of a dimension or a measure. So since this is coronavirus and since it's um, global in nature, this visualization right here seems interesting. So we hover over and we see that for maps, we should try one geographical dimension and one or more measures. No, my bad, sorry. Okay, so now let's move on to our third visualization. So I don't really like this visualization. I'm just going to go ahead and clear it. And so we're trying to use this maps visualization, correct? So let's go to our dimensions and see which one we can change to possibly fit it. So to change the type of a dimension, you just click on it and you'll see here, change data type. So you can change it to like Boolean, date, date and time, number, whatever you may choose. But here we want to give it a geographic role. So we're going to give it country slash region. And now we have a geographical measure. So we can drag that into columns. And now we can use this visualization. This, of course, at the moment is not particularly meaningful. So let's add a measure. Let's just do, for now, new cases. And now when we hover over, we can see the country name as well as the number of new cases. Something else to note is that we look at this map and it's all blue, okay? So it's not telling us much here. So we can click on this little icon and click color. And now we have a little bit, we have like more shading going on, but we still like, it's not, very meaningful. Like I look at this and I see that most of the world is a one color and the United States is a slightly darker blue. Oh, another thing to note here is like something that's like nice about Tableau is like it handles like null values pretty well. So like often values and it'll just leave these gray so it does not interrupt too much with other things that you may be trying to do. Anyway, so what we want to do is give this color more meaning. So we need to change this range, right? If we go from zero to three million, so we will click on this and edit colors, go to advanced and make a fixed range. So let's end at 2000, for example. And now all of a sudden, this map is much more meaningful, um, at least for Africa. Maybe that was not the best. Let me try 5,000. Or 4,000. The point is you can experiment with this to give your, um, that's not that much better. Yeah, but regardless, that is how you make the color more meaningful. So right now the color is coming from the number of cases, the lighter countries being the ones with less new cases. And then also be aware that you can like drag 
this around so that you can see the names of the measures more clearly. Um, something else to note is that, so this is, you can see like the formula that's happening. So this is the sum, it's just taking the collective sum of the new, of like all of the cases really in that country. So what you can do if you don't want the sum, although in this case, the sum is probably the most meaningful, you could do like the average. So like this is the average of cases, I believe on a daily basis. I could be wrong, but that is, um, yeah, I think so. Anyways, okay, so you, we can add measures. So here we have average new cases. Maybe you want to know new cases per million. So now when we hover over, we'll see United States, the average number of cases, and the new case per million. Um, I think by default, Tableau just does sum, at least within this type of visualization. Another, so we can just keep adding measures, like whatever you think is meaningful in this context. So like maybe deaths and deaths per million. So now we have like a full picture of what's going on. Something else to note is that like, so right now we have in the map view, you could change it to like bar. So like each bar is represented by country. It's a little hard to read. Um, same thing for a line. One that's kind of interesting in this specific case is density. So you can see like the US is obviously very dark as is much of Europe. But we'll go back to country. I think that's preferable. Uh, so something else besides just like average and sum, you can do like more advanced SQL calculation. So maybe we want to see the number of deaths per million as a percentile. So we'll do quick table calculation and click percentile. And so now when we hover over these countries, we can see that the US is at a very high percentile in terms of new deaths per million based on the location. Um, Turkey, not so much, and Madagascar is pretty low percentile wise. And then you might have noticed that the colors changed when we changed from the average of the new cases to the sum, right? Because naturally this um, defined range that we had is not as meaningful anymore. So we can change that. Let's go back to this. Make this average again. And I think here maybe, how much is the US? Okay, the US is 8,000. What does a country like Bolivia have? Oh, two. Okay, so if I think here, if we edit this to 500. Yeah, that's slightly more meaningful. There's no like systematic way to doing this. It's like really a lot of like experimentation or just un really understanding your data. So like it might have been useful to like at the beginning of this to really take the time to understand these numbers and like see the variation among them. And of course, like if you're collecting the data, like you'll be aware of these things. Okay. So we have this. Oh, um, like when we cover this, we see like location, average new cases, percentile of new deaths per million, long location, all these names along with the measures. If we want to edit these names, we'll just click tooltip and then we can change them. So maybe we don't want to call it location, we want to call it country. Or maybe percentile of new deaths per million along location is long, so we'll do like this division sign, although, yeah, I mean, that works. And then okay, and then we will see these new changes. Also in tooltip, you can change like, the responsiveness of it like, on hover or immediately, depending on how you choose to use this specific worksheet. Okay, and then the last thing is, what you can do, with, so we have this worksheet that we created, 
and this one, and then there's another one that we deleted. But you can like put these together and make a dashboard. So if you come down here, you'll see new dashboard. So we'll click new dashboard and we'll drop this sheet, let's drag it on over. And then maybe we'll also do this sheet right here. And this is not well formatted, but what you can see is that now we're kind of like telling a story about what's happening here, right? Like we see the deaths by location and we can also hover over and learn more specifically about what's going on in each of these individual countries. And this is important because when people usually use Tableau, they'll create a dashboard and that's what they'll use to convey their findings or to like present these visualizations to people. So along those lines, something that you can do is share this workbook. Like you can like embed it into a like site that you create or a site that you're contributing to. Um, of course, you can also just like export the um, worksheets that you've created. Okay, so now I'm going to show you all some of the workbooks that you will create. So if you go to, actually, let's not do that. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you some of the workbooks that people create. So if you go to Tableau Public, you can find a gallery of dashboards, visualizations. Some of them are very, very interesting. Well, actually, most of them are really. And yeah, so this one is, this is interesting. This is about the carbon footprint of food. This is one that somebody has created. You can see here winners and losers of the coronavirus stock market. So this is basically the same thing that we created. It's just a lot more like polished, and they've added text, of course. Um, which like none of this is difficult to do. It's just time consuming. But yeah, I would encourage you to explore the gallery for inspiration. There's a lot. The one last thing is to give credit where credit is needed. And then also if you're interested right now, Tableau software has made their e-learning courses free. So you can go to this site and use this access code and you can take their fundamentals and all the courses all the way through advanced. Also, if hopefully when you go back to school, you're interested in taking a class that like involves Tableau. I know DH 101 and some of the DH 150 classes use Tableau very heavily in their classes. Uh, but yeah, that's all I have. Thanks and bye.